It's nice to have you folks back here at Murphy's Welcome to My World. This time, it's the Great Layout Expansion at long last. How many years has it taken me to finally start this? Oh, probably eight or ten. Well, here it is. I did the bench work. I made this nice foam bench island in my train room. It's a 200 square foot train room. And once I built the uh, bench work, I wanted to see how my steel mill was going to fit together. I purchased these steel mill kits many years ago and have drug them around with me all over the place for years. These were Walters kits, in-scale Walters kits, which at the time were almost non-available. Today I've never seen them anywhere. And this is how my blast furnace came out. It came out beautiful. What an amazing model. But possibly one of the reasons why they discontinued it was it was so difficult. There was, oh, at least 400 or more parts to put together on this kit. It took me weeks to build it. Of course, you have to have a powerhouse. Got to have a powerhouse to go along with a, a big steel mill. The powerhouse came out actually quite nice. I really like it a lot, actually. To go along with that, you've got all kinds of other buildings, which we'll be showing here in just a minute. Okay, there's another one. The rolling mill. These things are giant. All of these kits ended up being, well, quite a bit larger than I had anticipated. They came out nice, but they look gigantic. They don't look in scale for sure. As I started in these getting these kits completed one by one, setting them up on the counter. It just didn't feel right. Something just didn't feel right. And here's the Coke oven. Coke oven came out really nice, but gigantic. You can see down in the corner, the lower right corner, the locomotive looked tiny. Well, eventually what I did is I called on an expert. I went and got my wife, and as she walked into the train room, she took one look at things and said, Oh, this is so wrong. This is so not right. The problem was that it just didn't fit in with the rest of everything that was in my train room. Even though these are great models, they just aren't on the same scale. It made everything else in the train room look very insignificant, like it didn't matter and it was just it was all wrong. So I had to make a decision. Did I want to pull out everything that was already finished in the room and concentrate on the steel mill? Or do I want to change my focus and give up the steel mill? And that's what I ended up doing. So I started looking around to see what I had on hand already built that I could use on this ex expansion. And I ended up having a whole bunch of stuff for a small seaport. I've been thinking about one for years. I've got tons of stuff that's already completed. So I started dragging all these items out to the train room, setting them up, moving them around, starting to play with them. Let's see, this can go there, that can go there. Well, let's try it. Yes, I was extremely disappointed that the steel mill just didn't work. I didn't want to not put it up, but hey, it just wasn't going to work. The more I played with the stuff that I did have on hand for this little seaport village, the more I really started getting interested in the project. In the back of my mind, I've wanted to do it for years and years. I think that's why I kept buying these kits and building them and building scratch-built stuff and stuff like that. And as you can see, I got a lot of stuff ready to go. Some of the items are on display stands, which I've taken to shows and stuff like that. They might prove to be a little problematic taking off, but not too much. Well, a new adventure has started. Now that I've dug all of these things out that I'd already constructed and had put away here and there and pigeonholed, I had a lot of fun playing with them and seeing, well, let's see, this will go there and maybe that can go over there. And then I actually got around to drawing some on the foam base to see how it'll work. Of course, I have my heavy little helpers here. They'll be used later when gluing everything together. I had to cut this foam, this two-inch foam, to make it about one inch foam so some of the stuff would fit things like the water and stuff like that and it ended up quite a bit of work to try to cut this foam you don't want to damage the foam you only want to cut it far enough in so you can make these indents there you can see one side here I am working away on the other side 
As you notice, the planning, well, there's not a whole lot of planning. It's pretty rough. With this foam, it's very forgiving. You can change it. Either fill it in or cut more off. Of course, the water areas you want to have good and flat. So spend some time working on that. After I've got it pretty flat, I like to use this Durham's water putty. It seals everything up and makes a nice hard crust. It's easy to paint and easy to work with. And of course, well, every harbor's got to have a lighthouse. So I built a little pedestal here for the lighthouse. As it worked out, it was actually quite a bit more work to take apart these small dioramas than I thought it would be. You know, I put them together so I could drag them around to different shows so everything was glued onto the base and glued onto the back. But being patient and taking my time, I was able to break the glue off all the different places and not break the models. Amazing! Of course, now what I want to do is I want to mark out where these dioramas are going to fit into the new expansion. Ended up with a whole lot of work to cut these sections out. Probably would have been easier just to fit other pieces around them, but that's not how it worked. Here's another one, ready to be taken apart. And there it is in the expansion. They actually fit in quite well and look really nice. It's amazing if you have something that's already basically built and put it in there. Here's the other side starting to come together. Things are starting to fit. As you can see, it's almost starting to look like something. It's time to do the water and I painted it first going from light colors in the shallower areas to the darker colors in the deeper areas using the Woodland Scenic Deep Pour solution works really good with the deep pour though you have to be really careful to keep the temperature up if the temperature gets cold it won't work okay it's time to get the crew outside and start collecting rocks for the seawall get to work guys get those rocks together it's time to get our work crew out there and start putting together the breakwater. And the way that I did this is I started out with the larger rocks, then I move into smaller ones and smaller ones and smaller ones to fill it up. There's no such thing as too much detail on these seawalls. So take your time and have some fun with it. And then of course I had some of these pre-made metal fabricated backdrops, so I used them some. Ah, it's starting to look like something. Things are fitting together. I like the way that the color looks. Both sides are starting to actually look like it could be something. And of course it just takes time. It takes time to put this stuff together. It's time finally, speaking of time, to take and put the main unit in the train room because I've been working on it in my workshop. So I took it out I glued it into place and it seems to fit nicely with the rest of the room. What do you think? Starting to look like something. I'm pretty happy with it anyway. So it's time to start thinking about how the track's gonna go. Where is it gonna go? How I'm gonna have things run back and forth? Best way to do that is just start laying the track out and then of course you mark where you're gonna put it. There's always gonna be some last minute adjustments making things fit and of course the more you take care of that the better it'll be. Of course, once you get all the track together, to make sure you get good operation, you want to solder all of the joints. Be really careful not to melt or burn anything along the way. And once you get done with the solder, you want to make sure that all the edges are smooth and easy for the trucks to run back and forth. Take your least stable car to try it back and forth. Now it's time to glue down the track. And what I do is I lay down glue first put the track down and then I put ballast right on top of it so it's all one action and then of course what you want to do is suck up the excess so you can use it again later now it's time to put your power taps if you're going to be running DCC you want to have power taps basically in every section of the track that's the only way that you can be absolutely assured that you'll get good contact and then after you solder that in of course you gotta take and clean up those spots make sure they're nice and smooth this is what it looks like under my table. I have two different electrical sets. The big ones there, those are for 12 volt constant power for lights and the other one is for the DCC track connections. And now it's time to find out if it's actually gonna work. And believe it or not, every section of the track worked the very first time. Of course, the big question was whether or not the cars would go on and off the barge. 
Amazingly, they went on the very first time. Cool, huh? Well, here we go. Let's see if it actually works after all of this effort. And off we go. Of course, we have to move stuff around. And here's the big test. Will I be able to actually move cars on and off of the barge? It's actually quite a bit more work trying to line those up than you would think. Oh, is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? Hey, hey, just like spreading butter on hot toast. Works great. Of course, you need to be able to get to all of the different industries and all the different docks. I got to make sure everything works. Got to be able to move cars from here to there and then back over here again. Be able to set them aside and pick them up, move them around, just like in real life. Now these turnout switch stand units are a little out of scale, they're a little too big, but they look a whole lot better than the other one that came with the switches. So there we go, we're flipping it over, works just fine. And these switch stands really hold the switch points in place really well. So far anyway, I haven't had any of the cars fall off going over the switches. Oh! Oh no! I must have, well, not done a very good job cleaning that spot on the track. Make sure to keep your track good and clean. Everything will work a lot better. The way I have all the switches and all the sidings and all the track running around, I can foresee many hours of being able to move cars around and not get bored. It's actually pretty fun using these switch stands. Much better than the ones that came with the switches. First we got to pick up cars, move them around. Time to collect all the cars and head back to the main part of the layout. Takes a bit of maneuvering around to get to the right place.
And this is my interchange track to the existing part of the layout. Have to be able to move things back and forth. So this has been real fun, the great layout expansion, part one. I've got it to a point now where I can play with it. Next step, well obviously I gotta start filling out the middle of the island. That's not quite yet though. I gotta have some fun playing with trains before I get real carried away with building some more stuff. Well thanks for joining us on another adventure of Murphy's Welcome to My World. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did and certainly be watching for part two the filling in of the great property in the middle of the island so come back and see us again here sometime have fun be safe out there bye guys